Chapter 39 The Volcano and the Red Dragon In the first days of the month of March, March 4, 2012 to be exact, it was Friday afternoon, some of the boys who had solved the riddle of the fire went out to the roof of the ranch to look towards Death Mountain, where the orographic shadows of the rain could be seen, its fern effect and small tremors began to be felt at night. They followed its trail and from the heights of Asgard Ranch it could be seen as on Death Mountain, in its conical fire volcano, had begun its nocturnal lava eruption activity, similar to fireworks. Fireballs as if they were comets were heading towards the western and southeastern areas of the town of Piscot, specifically towards the districts of New Riverville and Woodham Lands. Districts mostly full of forests, and with very little population like the native villages in Woodham Lands and the village of Chaka. So everyone held the assembly in the meeting room to define the teams that would go to the different places, Joel Sebastian, Hector, Katie, Eric, would stay at the ranch to protect it. Or in case of emergency reinforcements, take them with the Zeppelin. Before starting to name the teams, Black and Angie finally decided to swear in Katie at the request of Gavin and Mary Cross. Even though she had received the eagle mark on her arm, and it could not be removed, but was assigned in her house since last month, so she accepted the ranch pact, get down. Alessio shouted and everyone threw themselves to the ground, and then a loud roar was felt in the ranch. Everyone thought it had been an attack, but it was nothing more than an earthquake. How did you know it was an earthquake? Angie asked, remember that my specialty is the element of earth, I can feel an earthquake, fissure, slight tremor. Minutes after they occur, Alessio explained. Well, let's continue what we were doing, said Angie. We must visit several places, first, the fire volcano, active and dangerous, Gavin, Black. Alessio and Bastian will go there, you will look for the dragon in the surroundings, while I, Angelica, Tony and Katie will go down to the crater to look for this one, we will go through the lamps. When you get to that place, activate new lamps, take your flutes, said Angie, what about the support groups in this mission? asked Alex. They will be super important, we need almost everyone's help, said Black, that's right, we must hold back the fire and eliminate it completely, said Gavin, let's hurry. My village is in danger, said Chaka, we can't allow nature to, said Tony. Katie whispered to Gavin that she had finally understood and seen the true reality of the love for nature that her house companions had. There, Bonnie Danielle, Aura, Arthur, John Paul, Albert, Rubian, Darius, as well as Alex, Phoebe, Indira, Danny, Jones and Tefa will support us, said Angie, who will accompany me in Woodham Lands? She asked. Chaka, that place. Next to New Riverville is where the fires are occurring. Louis, Naomi and Priscilla will go with you there as well as the support group of Rasmus, Joss, Jimena, Neil, Megan, Aaron, Elisa, Carly, Nana, Aura, Daria and Kay Danielle, the triplets, Carrie, Estella and Livia, Carolyn, Beatrice, Esther, Gloria, Nick, Gustav, Lester, Leanne, Leisha, Fergie, Kimberly, Gilbert, Maileth, Yasser, Mayera and May Lynn, must be careful in the areas where there is a canopy. Black has helped us with the purchase of water guns, as well as water balloons. Use your aquarga magic to put an end to the disasters, Angie said while reading the paper where she had her plan, and then she added, the group that will go to New Riverville will be Roger. Alvard, Mariah, Mary Cross, Emily and Adrian, the place is larger than Woodham, so remember that some areas you will have to cross in boats, also bring your water guns and balloons, Natasha, Joshua, Leonard, Alessandro, Alexa, Annie, Dean, Marilou, 
Michelle, Valerie, Franklin, Mariana, Rachel, the twins Patty and Ruby and Arenas, Sophia, Sylvia, Samantha, Mott, Oscar, Polly, Saul. Paula and Natty will be from the support group, there you will help free Yed's brother, he is a native, when will we leave? Mariah asked, tomorrow, Saturday, at 3 in the afternoon. Is enough time, in the night, we will return to the ranch with the victory, we will communicate with Novs, and each crew that finishes their work in the four groups. Remember to return to the ranch immediately, said Angie. That was how everyone went to sleep, and on Saturday the 5th of March 2012, around 3 in the afternoon. All the groups were ready for the mission. The first group with Chaka, Louis, Naomi and Priscilla, followed by their support group, arrived at the Woodham Lands District, where some small screens of smoke could be seen in the forests that came out between the canopies, in different places, thus. The group the support team dispersed with their water guns to begin putting out the small incidents. We will go to the Palm Village, Chaka told his other three companions and they began to advance along the paths, and every accident they encountered, they threw water at it to extinguish them. Chaka began to use his canteen to use it as a reserve of water, dirt and sand, with his magic he could turn the content into whatever he wanted besides fire. Priscilla used Aqua and Aquara to stop the flames in the foliage, Naomi looked for all the animals that suffered cuts and burns, and with Statuna, she healed the states they were in. In addition to recovering their energy with Heelf, Louis also began to use Aquara and Aquarga with his wand, to extinguish those flames that were in distances where Chaka could not reach. Then, they reached the canopy, and crossed over the treetops, until finally reaching the palm village, where some of the villagers had fled. Since the flames of the fireballs were already very close to reaching the village. Village, so Chaka devised a plan, we will do the following, the village has not yet been affected by the flames. So the four of us will surround it, the support group will arrive at this place at any time, said Chaka. When the support group arrived, Chaka, Louis, Naomi and Priscilla faced four huge flames in each south, east, west and north sector of the village. After a while of fighting them, they managed to extinguish them completely and the village had been saved, now they would continue along the trail to reach the village of Yerioada to meet the second group. The second group with Roger, Adrian, Mariah, Emily, Albert and Mary Cross, in addition to the support group, arrived at New Riverville, on the banks of the river. They began to walk along the path until they found the accidents that were in this part. Due to the fireballs of the volcano, there the support group of this area began to disperse to begin eliminating the accidents with their water guns, both trios also divided. The group of Roger, Albert and Mary Cross continued along the path until they met the group of Adrian, Mariah, and Emily who came from another path, ending the accidents and they had to cross the river and Lake Murray by boat, to reach them. The other place, and finally when everyone passed, the village of Yerioata was very close, a little far from Yed's hut. Where here they stopped to put out the fires that were in the bushes and others in the forest that was being attacked by the fireballs. Upon arriving at the village, in the same way as the first group, they had to divide into different sectors to stop the fire that was coming towards the native village. After a few minutes of fighting with this fire with the help of their magic, Aquarga, they managed to stop it, Roger using his Neptune weapon threw rocks, sand and earth towards the fires to put it out, Alvard with his whip allowed him to create small bridges so that animals like squirrels and monkeys could go to other places where there was no fire. Adrian he helped Roger with explosives so that the large rocks turned into sand and earth. 
In addition to Emily with her sword making her way through the bushes already ruined by the fire to open new paths with her gusts of wind and sharp blade of her sword, Mariah and Mary Cross. Like Naomi, healed the living beings who suffered burns using their heel and Statuna light magics. The native village was a place where hundreds of houses in the shape of straw cones were surrounding a large house, also in the shape of a cone. Everyone entered there and a native in his chair mentioned that he was waiting for them, welcome heroes, you free me, brother Yed, I be Yerioata. Both of us be grateful to heroes, mentioned the native. So the rest of the group sat around him, while they told him about the legend of the red dragon of fire in the volcano. Mary Cross and the others responded that there were already some heroes looking for the dragon to defeat him and for the volcano to return to sleep. After this, Yerioata told them about other riddles. The final battle draws near, help comes with new information from allies from the Forgotten Land. Sylvanesha puts guardians of the towers of transmission of evil magic to dark deities all over the map. The enemy's allies take revenge against heroes. Go to the past to know the next wise. And finally, when he finished, he gave them a golden canteen, Jikara. It was Chaka's last weapon. Chaka and the first group arrived at the place. To their bad luck, Yerioata had already dissipated, to Chaka handed over his weapon, and he was very happy since he had finally reached the last level of it. So the whole group went to a place to activate the lamp in this place and go back to the ranch to wait for the mission. Concluded by the group that was at the volcano. The third group with Angie. Tony, Angelica, Katie, Gavin, Black, Alessio and Bastian, followed by the support group, arrived at the Cold Death Mountain, the highest peak in Piscuit. The fog had disappeared and the path to the fire volcano looked extremely clear and walking along it, in addition to encountering some enemies on the way, after 10 minutes. They reached a crossroads where the path to the volcano was, the path to the radio towers called Tower Plains and the path to the Martian ruins, so they took the volcano path. Where more enemies appeared and the tremors and heat were increasing, it was already close to 7 at night, the volcano was he had stopped throwing fireballs. So the group of boys began to ascend the cone of the volcano, which had a rocky but dusty surface that made the boys slip. Once at the peak, Angie had a plan. Alessio, Black, Gavin and Bastian. You go around the volcano around the crater, while I, Katie, Angelica and Tony will go down to the crater lagoon, everyone agreed with the plan. So Alessio suggested everyone to take of a potion that he had prepared for high temperatures, it was a potion to withstand the heat for about 20 minutes, what is it made of? Tony asked. Oils. Ash, mint leaves, an ice cube, Komodo dragon scales, whale blubber and penguin fur. Alessio replied, Ugh, disgusting. I'm not taking that crap, said Tony, such a weak. Don't be a little whinny. It has no taste, said Angie, don't be weak. Take it, said Angelica, you will be burned, you will be like a marshmallow, said Gavin and finally Tony drank the potion. The group of Angie, Tony, Angelica, Katie came down towards the crater, where the acidic green water of the lagoon was intact, as if the lava they had observed had never existed, everyone was very surprised, when suddenly, the heat began to increase, the fumaroles and the smell of sulfur became more intense, the green lake began to lower its level until it dried up and suddenly, through the fumaroles, strong drops of lava began to come out, and in it a creature of lava and fire was formed. The first duel began with Angie, Tony, Angelica and Katie against the lava demon, it began to throw incandescent rocks at the group. So Katie began using Fastega to increase the speed of the entire team. She had one more turn and called to his Coco and Cleo summons, he also created an ice reflect barrier to avoid the attacks of the lava demon. The creature attacked with a very powerful wave of lava from Bernaga, 
but fortunately thanks to that barrier, the attack was not so critical. After this, the demon, as if it were a hose, began to shoot a flow of lava again. Angelica began to cut with her hair sticks converted into two large katanas the lava protuberances that this demon was creating, followed by this. A lava arm tried to hit them like a sledgehammer, but everyone managed to avoid it thanks to the fastega's speed. Tony launched his gold chakus with Rokarga magic against it. Followed by an arrow from Angie with her crossbow, Katie tried to use E-scan but he said, Unidentified enemy, what does this mean? We're not doing you any harm. We need to use better dark magics. Katie shouted and she used Lentauga to slow down the lava demon, in that case, let's use summons, said Tony, good idea. Angie responded. I'll keep cutting the lava bumps said Angelica, the demon again threw incandescent Bernaga rocks against them, at the moment it was Angie's turn, she called Ganesha, and ordered him to use a quarga magic against the lava demon, where these blows were truly critical against this, the demon attacked Ganesha but his fire attacks did not do any damage. So the demon decided to throw rocks without fire where they had a greater damaging effect, Angie ordered Ganesha to use Aqua on herself to heal her energy and recharge his special attack. After a while, he used holy water and the size of the lava in the place was reduced and the demon was smaller, but he began to use more attacks with rocks, where he finally defeated Ganesha. So Tony called at Thor, and with his hammer he began to hit the lava with Metarga's attacks, Electraga's attacks had no effect but Metarga's magic could break the rocks he threw. He also launched Frieza where he managed to freeze him in some parts. Hey, I have a plan. Katie shouted. So Tony dispelled Thor before the rocks defeated him and Katie with Cleo and Coco began to use Frizaga to freeze the rest of the place and the demon. Tony. Angie and Angelica would use their weapons to destroy the rocks covered in ice and they began to turn into dust, however. A large rock that was shaped like an egg had formed in one sector and it began to shake, damn it. It's those tremors again, Angie shouted. And the egg-shaped rock began to shake until it broke and a red dragon emerged from it towards the surface, it's the red fire dragon. He's going to where our friends are. Tony shouted, come on. Let's go back to the surface, said Angelica. The duel reached a second phase, where the red fire dragon appeared in their Gavin, black. Alessio and Bastian were observing how a glow was seen at the bottom of the crater, and from that glow a huge red flash jumped out, which began to fly in the surroundings throwing fireballs at them and finally got into a battle position, a flying enemy, we have the advantage that I, Black and Alessio can attack when it is far away in the air, Bastian. You will attack when it is close. Gavin said, okay, Bastian responded. The duel began. The dragon came down from the sky and approached them inside the crater and began to throw fireballs at them from its mouth again, Bastian attacked it with his axe with a fairly strong blow. Gavin created a blue whirlwind of Aquara and attacked it. Launched against the dragon, dealing heavy damage, followed by this. The water spear by Alessio and a huge water grenade with Black's bazooka. The dragon in turn, flew and moved away to the other side of the crater. It was a longer distance from the boys. For which Bastian could not attack but Black shot him a huge water bullet, Alessio launched his Saturn where Aquaga's sphere transforming into blue impacted him strongly, then the dragon from the air first launched a curtain of flames, then incandescent rocks and finally, a flow of lava from its mouth. In addition to creating a strong breeze from Windaga and a rain of eight lightning bolts from Electraga, on Gavin's turn, he launched his boomerang with Windaga and changed the current of the wind. Making it this brought the dragon towards them again. The dragon attacked again with a strong blow with its tail, and suddenly used its special attack. Called the dragon's fury and doubled its size and launched eight attacks from Bernaga, 
Electraga and Windaga against them. After having received the fairly strong impact, Bastian decided to heal the group with potions and did not attack, so Gavin launched his boomerang with a cyclone of blizzard and it was a critical hit to the dragon. Alessio also used his special attack and launched eight spheres of Frizaga and Aquarga against the dragon. Daniel Black also used his special attack with eight bullets of Aquarga causing dragon to be left with very little vitality, Bastian gave the final blow with his axe giving as winners against the red enemy upon defeating the dragon it began to move throughout the sky as if it were a deflated balloon and rose quickly throughout the sky until it hit one of the radio towers in tower plains on death mountain where the steel structures penetrated his scaled body as if he were a snake that had been pierced by a spear you guys really did that angie asked as she saw the scaly serpentine body of the dragon embedded in the radio tower. After finishing the duels, the boy that Gavin, Angie and Paula met on the Scarlet Eagles train named John Rat appeared. Look, it's a guy from the Scarlet Eagles. What the hell do you want? Bastian shouted with disdain. Calm down you fool, I've only come to give you some information, said Rat. You're the boy from the train, said Angie, from the train. Asked Tony who was already ready to hit him with his nunchakus, yes, the first day, on the train he talked to us, Tony. He is in the enemy house, but he is on our side, said Gavin, that's right, answered Rat, and what do you want? Asked Tony, staring at him, after destroying the red dragon. The path to Massey County is free again, said Rat, Massey County? What is that place? asked Katie, it's where the OVLAT school is located, brother of the Rhoda school, look to your left, said Rat. Everyone began to look to the left, where in the distance there was a small town colonial next to a lake. That's Massey County, said Rat, pointing to the place. I didn't know that Rhoda school had a brother, said Alessio, well yes, I was there in the first year, before starting my journey, the witch Sylvanesha destroyed the school and the village. She thought it was a threat to her, that's the story I wanted to tell them on the train, added Rat, are you the only survivor of that school? Asked Angelica, no. Some of my, your companions are still there, but they lost their powers, they have something of great importance to you, that's why I want you to accompany me, said Rat. How will we get there? Asked Gavin, at the other end of the crater. There are some boards, they will use that as if they were skiing, we will go down the rocky and dusty surface of the volcano. Sliding until we reach the town, but there are only ten boards to go down to the town, said Rat pointing to a place, in that case, I, Alessio, Alex, Tony, Jones, Danny, Angelica, Phoebe. Tefa and Indira, four heroes and some of the support group will go, said Angie, don't worry, trust me, it's a help for this fight, she said Rat, what about us? Black asked. You and Gavin go back to the ranch through the lamp along with the rest of the support group, there you will meet with the crews from the forest districts to see what information they obtained. We will return to the ranch from Massey County, Angie said, and everyone left. On the other hand, Angie, Indira, Tefa, Phoebe, Angelica, Alessio, Tony, Alex, Danny and Jones follows Rat. 